Monday of the 24th week in Ordinary Time. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Sing praise to God who reigns above, the God of all creation, the God of power, the God of love, the God of our salvation. With healing balm my soul he fills, and every faithless murmur stills. To God all praise and glory. What God's almighty power hath made, his gracious mercy keepeth. By morning glow or evening shade, his watchful eye never sleepeth. Within the kingdom of his might, lo, all is just and all is right. To God all praise and glory. Then all my gladsome way along I sing aloud thy praises, that men may hear the grateful song my voice unwearied raises. Be joyful in the Lord, my heart, both soul and body bear your part. To God all praise and glory. O ye who name Christ's holy name, give God all praise and glory. All ye who own his power proclaim aloud his wondrous story. Cast each false idol from his throne, the Lord is God and he alone. To God all praise and glory. How good is the God of Israel to the pure of heart. How good God is to Israel, to those who are pure of heart. Yet my feet came close to stumbling, my steps had almost slipped. For I was filled with envy of the proud when I saw how the wicked prosper. For them there are no pains, their bodies are sound and sleek, they have no share in men's sorrows, they are not stricken like others. So they wear their pride like a necklace, they clothe themselves with violence. Their hearts overflow with malice, their minds seethe with plots. They scoff, they speak with malice, from on high they plan oppression. They have set their mouths in the heavens, and their tongues dictate to the earth. So the people turn to follow them and drink in all their words. They say, How can God know? Does the Most High take any notice? Look at them, such are the wicked, but untroubled they grow in wealth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. How good is the God of Israel to the pure of heart! Their laughter will turn to weeping, their merriment to grief. How useless to keep my heart pure and wash my hands in innocence, when I was stricken all day long, suffered punishment day after day. Then I said, If I should speak like that, I should abandon the faith of your people. I strove to fathom this problem, too hard for my mind to understand. Until I pierced the mysteries of God, and understood what becomes of the wicked. How slippery the paths on which you set them! You make them slide to destruction. How suddenly they come to their ruin, wiped out, destroyed by terrors. Like a dream one wakes from, O Lord. When you wake, you dismiss them as phantoms. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Their laughter will turn to weeping, their merriment to grief. Those who depart from you will perish. My joy is to remain with you, my God. And so, when my heart grew embittered, and when I was cut to the quick, I was stupid and did not understand, no better than a beast in your sight. Yet I was always in your presence. You were holding me by my right hand. You guide me by your counsel, and so you will lead me to glory. What else have I in heaven but you? Apart from you I want nothing on earth. My body and my heart faint for joy. God is my possession forever. All those who abandon you shall perish. You will destroy all those who are faithless. To be near God is my happiness. I have made the Lord God my refuge. I will tell of all your works at the, city, at the gates of the city of Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. It is good to be with you, Father. In you is fullness of life for your faithful people. In you all hope resides. May you lead us to everlasting happiness. Those who depart from you will perish. My joy is to remain with you, my God. To savor your words is my delight, O Lord. Honey itself is not sweeter. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord spoke to me and said, As for you, son of man, obey me when I speak to you. Be not rebellious like this house of rebellion, 
but open your mouth and eat what I shall give you. It was then I saw a hand stretched out to me, in which was a written scroll which he unrolled before me. It was covered with writing front and back, and written on it was, Lamentation and wailing and woe. He said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, then go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Son of man, he then said to me, Feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll I am giving you. I ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. He said, Son of man, go now to the house of Israel, and speak my words to them. Not to a people with difficult speech and barbarous language am I sending you, nor to the many peoples with difficult speech and barbarous language, whose words you cannot understand. If I were to send you to these, they would listen to you. But the house of Israel will refuse to listen to you, since they will not listen to me. For the whole house of Israel is stubborn of brow and obstinate in heart. But I will make your face as hard as theirs, and your brow as stubborn as theirs, like diamond, harder than flint. Fear them not, nor be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. Son of man, he said to me, Take into your heart all my words that I speak to you. Hear them well. Now go to the exiles, to your countrymen, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they heed or resist. Thus the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel. When you hear a word from my mouth, you shall warn them for me. If I say to the wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not warn him, or speak out to dissuade him from his wicked conduct, so that he may live, the wicked man shall die for his sin, but I will hold you responsible for his death. If, on the other hand, you have warned the wicked man, yet he has not turned away from his evil, nor from his wicked conduct, then he shall die for his sin, but you shall save your life. If a virtuous man turns away from virtue and does wrong when I place a stumbling block before him, he shall die. He shall die for his sin, and his virtuous deeds shall not be remembered. But I will hold you responsible for his death, if you did not warn him. When, on the other hand, you have warned a virtuous man not to sin, and he has in fact not sinned, he shall surely live because of the warning, and you shall save your own life. I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel. Listen to what I say to you and speak to them in my name. Neither be afraid of them, nor rebellious like them. I will make your face as hard as theirs, and your forehead as stubborn and as obstinate. Neither be afraid of them, nor rebellious like them. A reading from a sermon on pastors by St. Augustine, Bishop. Let us consider the unflattering words of God which Scripture addresses to shepherds who feed themselves and not the sheep. You consume their milk and cover yourselves with their wool. You kill the fatlings, but my sheep you do not pasture. You have failed to strengthen what was weak, to heal what was sick, and to bind up what was injured. You did not call back what went astray, nor seek out what was lost. What was strong you have destroyed, and my sheep have been scattered because there is no shepherd. This is spoken to the shepherds who feed themselves and not the sheep. It speaks of their concern and their neglect. What is their concern? You consume their milk and cover yourselves with their wool. And so the apostle asks, Who plants a vineyard and does not eat from its fruit? Who pastures a flock and does not drink from the milk of the flock? Thus we learn that the milk of the flock is whatever temporal support and sustenance God's people give to those who are placed over them. It is of this that the Apostle was speaking in the passage just quoted. Although he chose to support himself by the labor of his own hands and not to ask for milk from the sheep, the Apostle did say that he had the right to receive the milk, for the Lord had established that they who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. Paul also says that others of his fellow apostles made use of this right, a right granted them, and not unlawfully usurped. But Paul went further by not taking what was rightfully his. He forgave the debt, whereas the others did not demand what was not due them. Therefore Paul went further. Perhaps his action was foreshadowed by the good Samaritan, who when he brought the sick man to the inn said, If you spend any more, I will repay you on my way back. 
what more can I say concerning those shepherds who do not need the milk of the flock? They are more merciful, or rather, they carry out a more abundant ministry of mercy. They are able to do so, and they do it. Let them receive praise, but do not condemn the others. The apostle himself did not seek what was given. However, he wanted the sheep to be fruitful, not sterile and unable to give milk. I myself shall pasture my sheep, and I myself shall give them rest, says the Lord God. I shall look for the lost sheep and bring back the stray. I shall strengthen the weak and protect the healthy and strong. I shall look for the lost sheep and bring back the stray. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Creator and Guide, may we serve you with all our heart and know your forgiveness in our lives. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks.